Welcome to a new series of my tutorial how to make a GTA mobile Android something game and here you see the result of our today's episode. We will be able to get into the car and actually drive it. We will use Unity's physics engine and the wheel collider to achieve this. So here we are back in our scene and I reorganized my car model. So I divided this car into the car mesh and the car. So the car was an empty game object and I just drag and drop the car mesh on it. And then I pulled this sphere collider, box collider, car script and widget body script one level higher. I renamed the car animation because we will have a new script called car physics for the physics. And the first thing we do is we create some wheels. So I will call this wheel font left and I will add the wheel collider component to it. And the next thing I do is just set it to the wheel and maybe decrease the radius a little bit so that it fits to my wheel. I will just copy the wheel and just change the position accordingly. The most, 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 most important thing when you are dealing with car physics is the center of mass and the mass itself. So the mass should be a wheel value in kilogram. For example, a car weighed 2.8 thousand kilogram and I add 100 kilogram per wheel. And this is the most important things, otherwise you will get completely ridiculous results. So this car physics script is really simple. You can set the center of mask. I would recommend you to set it really low so that the car won't fall over. Um, you can customize the wheels here. So I will type in four. And for example, I take the front left physics wheel and drag and drop it here to the wheel collider. Then I go to the wheel mesh, front left, and this one exactly go to the uh, mesh renderer. I said, okay, this is a steer wheel. It will uh, steer and it has a motor attached to it. And I repeat that for the other ones. And this is what it looks like. Um, the motor power is actually the power of the motor and the force that is applied to the wheels. And the steer angle is the angle of the front wheels uh, that they can steer. The keep grip is um, how fast the car should lose grip in extreme situations. For example, if you uh, accelerating really hard or you are in very tight um, curves and the grip is a grip on the ground. This really simplifies these physics wheels because the script will set these values. You uh, do not have to care about them. You just have to set the mass, the radius, the damping rate, um, which is really uh, how hard the car will damp, the suspension distance, so this is a suspension, this orange thing here, and I would really may recommend you to not have it too long or too short. One third of the complete um, diameter is perfect. As a force app point distance is this point. Uh, I would recommend you to leave it here as this is a contact with the ground. It's really perfect, so set it at zero. The center, the center should always be here. Um, I do not know any reason to set it to a different value. The spring and the damper are very complicated values. Uh, you can really start messing with these around. Um, the initial value is fine if you set the mass right. Um, we can try it out what will happen. But I will just say what the target position is. So the target position is the position, um, the west position of the spring. I would leave it in the middle because then it can, the spring can turn down or up based on the pressure that is um, being used on the car. Okay, as promised, we will uh, start messing around with these two values. You can grab the car in the play mode and in the scene window and you can drop it and you see um, how it behaves. So 
Now let's take the damper and increase it by a value of 10. And you directly see it will be a little bit smoother. If you want this, then you can leave the value like that. Um, I will uh, decrease the value and let's see what will happen. This one, so it's very unstable. So this value was pretty good. Now let's play with the spring. Let's increase the spring and you will directly notice the car will jump a little bit more. Let's increase it a little bit further. And there we go. And let's decrease the value. And now it's very hard. It hasn't even the force to um, get the wheels out of the ground. And if you really mess up with these values, uh, something weird will happen like this one. So this is what you will always see when you start uh, using these wheel colliders. Okay, that's basically it. You can go into the car and drive it. You do not need to know anything special. You can just uh, grab the car script. I will set you the link uh, to the car script into the description. You do not have to understand it in detail, but if you want, I will explain it right now. So first of all, in the controller, I changed our fixed update. So I added a switch statement because when the, the player is in state normal, he should behave differently because in car, uh, we will do the following. So the player has a reference to the nearest car and the car physics. And the car physics script has an input parameter. The input parameter is just forward or steer. And the forward is just the joystick input vector y and the steer is the input vector x. So these values are just forwarded to the car script. We will set the car button active so that we can get out of the car. And then we will set the camera. Okay, how to get the camera right? You can use transform forward and transform up and multiply these vectors. For example, transform forward, you can multiply it by minus 1.5 times camera distance and you are here and the up vector times the camera distance and you are here. And then you have the position. I will use a smooth damp so that the position is not set directly. It's uh, smooth, the camera is smoothly uh, moving towards this position. The next important thing is that you have to specify a look target. And as you can see with this vector, the look target is not the car itself, it's in front of the car. So I use this forward vector and go here and I went a little bit up, so maybe it's here. So that you can look here in the camera perspective and that the car is at the bottom of your screen and you have a big field of view where you can really see what's in front of you. So the target position as mentioned is uh, car position um, plus uh, car position forward times minus 1.5 plus the uh, nearest car transform up times the camera distance. And this will be used with smooth damp. So smooth damp uh, works the following. It just takes the current position and the target position and you have to pass a camera velocity. You do not have to set it. It's just a vector 3 that is a parameter in your class. Just leave it as it is. It stores the velocity and you specify a time frame. This is a 300 milliseconds time. Um, and this time I will give the script to reach the target from the current position. So the look at target is just the car plus the forward vector times 1.5 times the camera distance. Let's talk about the car physics script. Let's start with the input. The input is pretty basic. It's just forward and steer. It's a struct as we already used uh, in the player script. And then we have the rigid body and the center of mass as a public variable. Then we also specify the motor power, the steer angle, the keep grip value and the grip value. We will come to this later. And then we have the wheel infos. So this is an array 
And to make it editable in the editor, I will specify system.crealizable as an attribute to the wheel info. And the wheel info has a wheel collider, as a mesh, the flag for steering and motor, and a hidden rotation. We will come to this later. It's for the animation. Okay, let's start right away. On a wake, we will get our reference to the widget body and set the center of mass to the specified center of mask. To see the center of mask in the editor, um, we can set the gizmo color to red on the gizmos, and we will draw two wire spheres. You can see it here in the editor. These are really two spheres, and they indicate where the center of mask is. The next thing is the implementation on on validate. We will call this on a wake, and Unity will automatically call this as soon as we change any value in the editor. And uh, the keep grip and grip will set the asymptote value, extreme value, extreme slip, and asymptote slip of our wheel collider frictions. To understand this, we have to go to the Unity documentation, and there you will find this picture. So. What we want to have is some kind of a slipping function. So if you apply force to the wheels, the force should be applied to the car as well, up to a certain point. If you're accelerating too fast at the start, your cars will spin faster than you are able to go forward and your force is not applied directly and then you go to this asymptote. Normally, um, you let this slip value be fixed here and here, and this extremal value should be specified once. This asymptote value should be between the extremum value and zero. And what we will do is we will take this variable, multiply it by the extremum value, and we take care of that this value is never zero, so we will add a tiny bit to it. And this one should never be O1 directly. So we multiply it by um, a value that's lower one. The other values are basically standard and fixed value. The stiffness uh, is set to the grip. What the stiffness is doing, it's just multiplying this value. For example, if you set the stiffness to two, the extremum will be doubled and the asymptote will be doubled as well. The stiffness should be used at one time, for example, when you're driving from the road to an icy lake, the stiffness uh, should be, or the grip should be sa set to zero instead of five, which uh, is a good value for a uh, road. Okay, let's come to the update method. On fix update, we iterate through all of the wheels. And if the wheel is a motor, we will set the motor torque. If the wheel has steer, we will set the steer angle. And we will take the input values and multiply it by our parameters. And now we have to rotate our meshes. Otherwise, it will look like our car is driving, but you can't really see it because the wheels are still. So we take our wheel info rotation. So this is what I said. Um, we will use this later. And we will add a value to it. And let's have a look at which value it is. So the wheel collider has a value called rounds per minute or rotations per minute. And if we divide it by 60, we have the rotations per second. If we multiply it by 360, we have the degree per second. And if we multiply it by the fixed delta time, we have the degrees uh, in our current time frame. And we will add this to the rotation. And we will use this rotation for the local rotation of the mesh renderer. And we say, okay, take the rotation of the parent and multiply it by quaternion. This quaternion will have three values, x, y, and z. x is the wheel's rotation, y is the steer angle, because you should see that you steer the front wheels, and z will be zero, there will be no rotation in the z direction. If you have a look at the Unity documentation, you will find everything you need. And you will also find uh, this graph. We already talked about this. And you will find hints. To prevent the car from flipping over too easily, you should set 
the center of mask very low and maybe apply a down pressure to it depending on the car velocity. <clears throat> so let's do it. We say rigid body at force at position. And for me it makes sense to take the center of mass and apply a down force. And the down force should be maybe down, which is one, or minus one up, times minus one, times the grip, because the higher the grip, the more pressure I should apply, times the velocity, because this is what the documentation is saying. And there we go, transform up times minus one or minus um, 0 0.1. We will take the velocity magnitude and we will multiply the grip. This is our down force and we will uh, apply it to the center of mass. And there we go, that's all we need. So as I said, the script of the car physics is down in the description, you can download it, copy paste it into your project and use it. You can also download the complete project. It's in the GitHub repository. The link is also down into the, in the description. So if you liked the video, please comment on it and leave a like. If I should continue with this tutorial, please write which uh, steps should be the next or if I should do uh, a complete different video, please let me know. So see you next time.